Good afternoon, distinguished guests. Welcome to Volume 6 of the TCS 10th Anniversary Symposium Series, promoting trilateral cooperation at the local level, hosted by the Trilateral Cooperation Secretariat. It is our great pleasure to have you join us both offline and online. My name is Ryosuke Sawayama, and I have the great honor to serve as your MC today. First and foremost, we would like to express our sincere gratitude towards our supporters, the China International Friendships Cities Association, the Council of Local Authorities of International Relations, and the Governor's Association of Korea, all of which have contributed greatly to promoting exchange between cities of the three countries. Today, we have invited an excellent group of experts and practitioners who will introduce to us overviews of local government exchange in the three countries, as well as best practices. Without further ado, I'd like to invite TCS Secretary General Michigami Hisashi for his opening remarks. Good afternoon, ladies and gentlemen. I am Michigami, and I'm the Secretary General of the TCS. We are very pleased to hold the 6th Symposium of the TCS 10th Anniversary Symposium Series today. I also would like to thank everyone for taking time out of your busy schedule and joining us either in Seoul or through online participation. TCS or the Trilateral Cooperation Secretariat is an international organization established in 2011 based on the agreement of the leaders of China, Japan, and South Korea. There have been 21 ministerial level uh, meetings led by the three countries, and the TCS has actively supported them. In particular, the areas such as environment, health, and disaster prevention are the common tasks of the three countries. And even in the private sector, TCS has engaged in many cooperative projects in academia, business, and youth exchanges. Local city exchange, the theme of today's symposium, is also one of the important areas of cooperation promoted by TCS. In addition to the bilateral exchanges between Japan and China, Japan and South Korea and China and South Korea, there are a total of 21 trilateral exchange cases engaged by more than 55 local governments of the three countries. Exchanges are being made not only amongst the local governments, but also between the universities, museums, and libraries. In order to further promote and strengthen such exchanges, TCS has actively involved in existing local exchange projects such as East Asia, Culture City Project, and at the same time promoted triangle exchange database among the local cities of the three countries as our own initiative holding symposiums on the regeneration of local cities. Regarding overcoming COVID-19 pandemic, local governments of China, Japan, and South Korea have helped and supported one another too. Even though we are not able to have face-to-face -face exchange due to COVID-19, we have gathered today to hold a symposium for information exchange. And we are joined by leading experts and working level officials from the three countries. By sharing and discussing the best practice and the cases of each country, I hope that trilateral exchanges among local cities will gain further momentum when the pandemic situation gets resolved. I would like to conclude my opening remarks by wishing for the success of the symposium, strengthening of trilateral cooperation in the field of local city exchange, and good health to everyone. And also, I wish you for the success of uh, the Tokyo Olympic Games and the Paralympics, as well as the success of uh, the trilateral summit meeting. Thank you very much. Secretary General Michigami, thank you for your remarks. We are also pleased to share congratulatory messages from each of our supporters today. First, we have remarks from Mr. Qing Boming, Secretary General of the China International Friendship Cities Association, as well as Council Member of the Chinese People's Association for Friendship with Foreign Countries. 
Distinguished participants, ladies and gentlemen, good afternoon. On the occasion of the 10th anniversary of the establishment of the Trilateral Cooperation Secretariat, it is a great pleasure to join you at this online conference or webinar under the topic promoting trilateral cooperation at the local level. First of all, on behalf of China International Friendship Cities Association, I would like to extend my warm grand congratulations to the opening of the forum and my sincere thanks to the TCS Secretariat for its meticulous preparation and warm invitation. The three countries of Korea, China, and Japan are geographically close culturally similar, similar and have maintained long-standing friendly exchanges. In the meantime, the three countries have continuously promoted cooperation in each area through various channels of dialogue and have achieved great results. Among them, exchanges between friendship cities and local governments and are the most important part of trilateral cooperation and have played an important role in promoting friendship, mutual understanding, and mutual benefit and reciprocity among the peoples of the three countries. In particular, during the COVID-19 quarantine process, the local governments of the three countries and especially the friendship cities overcame the crisis of helping each other and by practicing the idiom of uh, sanchan iya pungol dongchan meaning uh, though we are in different places our hearts are together and tober wan in mu igu meaning chao is not distant from people and people do not differ from country to country uh, such cooperation left behind a moving story of friendly exchange and embodied the Asian spirit of culture of sumang sangjo dongju gongje which means helping each other uh, overcome difficulties as if um, crossing a river in the same boat today the three countries of Korea China and Japan face new challenges as they all together experience a change of the century as well as an infectious disease. This can also be a new opportunity. In such a situation, TCS endeavor to host a seminar on the topic of cooperation between the three countries and to hold this webinar by inviting officials from the local governments of the three countries and experts related to the Friendship Study Project carries a very important and realistic meaning. Uh, together with all of you, I hope to discuss new ways that will enable the three countries to continue on with developing local government exchanges and cooperation in the post-COVID era and promote peace, stability, development, and prosperity in the region and the world and contribute to the establishment establishment of a community with a shared future of mankind. Uh, the China International Friendship Studies Association, to which I belong, was established in 1992 and has been promoting friendly exchanges and practical cooperation between local governments in China and other countries for a long time, as well as promoting the establishment of friendship studies between local governments and cities. Thus far, China has established friendly exchange relations with more than 2,800 cities in 130 countries around the world, with the largest number of friendship cities from Korea and Japan. I believe this exhibits the robust driving force and huge potential of trilateral local government cooperation. Going forward, China International Friendship Studies Association will closely communicate and cooperate with all of you to gather wisdom and res resources from various fields, including the government, private sector, and academia. And based on these efforts, we will do our best to strengthen the foundation of friendly exchanges among Korea, China, and Japan and promote mutual beneficial cooperation among the local governments of the three countries to achieve new results. Thank you and wish the seminary great success. Thank you for your message, Mr. Ching. Next, we have remarks from Mr. Machida Toyoji, head of the Seoul Office of the Council of Local Authorities of International Relations. Good afternoon, ladies and gentlemen. My name is Machida, and I'm Seoul Office Head of Council of Local Authorities for International Relations. First of all, I would like to express my sincere congratulations on the 10th anniversary of the TCS and today's symposium which is being held to commemorate the anniversary. I also would like to express my deepest respect for the contributions to the peace, stability, and friendship between the three countries that TCS has made since its establishment. COVID-19 pandemic has taken a lot of things from us, including many lives, time, and money. To fight against a COVID-19 pandemic, we had to spend time and efforts that we would otherwise have spent doing many other things. And I believe that this is the time that the three neighboring countries must work together to jointly tackle this global pandemic, as well as the challenge posed by it. The same is true for the promoting of trilateral cooperation at the local level, the theme of today's symposium. So far, local cities in the three countries have strengthened exchanges in a wide range of fields such as economy, environment, sports, tourism, and youth. And I think it is necessary to think and discuss together 
about the issues and tasks that change significantly and rapidly. Experts and working level officials from local governments of the three countries are invited to today's symposium to introduce the current status and the representative cases of trilateral local exchanges and to discuss how local cities should promote their exchange in the post-COVID-19 era. I sincerely hope that today's symposium will contribute to the resolution of common problems and to promote trilateral cooperation between the local cities of the three countries. With this, I would like to conclude my congratulatory remarks and wish for the success of today's symposium and the TCS organizer of the symposium, as well as the end of COVID-19 pandemic. Thank you very much, and congratulations again. Thank you for your message, Mr. Machida. Finally, we have remarks from Mr. Kim Deshik, Director General of the Decentralization Policy Bureau of the Governors Association of Korea. Well, good day, distinguished guests. I am Kim Deshik, Director General of Decentralization Policy Bureau of the Governors Association of Korea. First of all, I would like to extend my congratulations to the symposium held under the theme Promoting Trilateral Cooperation at the Local Level as we commemorate the 10th anniversary of the establishment of TCS. Uh, because the Trilateral Cooperation Secretariat has continuously provided a forum for cooperation where the central governments, local governments, and the people of the three countries can work together, having the theme of this symposium be Promoting Trilateral cooperation at the local level seems very meaningful. Exchanges and cooperation between and among countries have traditionally been represented by diplomatic activities between central governments. However, in today's highly interconnected world, the people of each country have greatly increased their engagements globally and the role of local governments uh, uh, and the role that they play su to support these activities is becoming increasingly important. Up till now, the local governments of Korea, China, and Japan have been promoting exchange and cooperation projects in various fields such as administrative, cultural, and economic exchanges, thereby building friendship and trust among the people of the three countries and further contributing to the overall development of trilateral relations. In the past decade, there have been times when the diplomatic relations among the three countries have at times been strained. However, in the midst of all of this, just as various wild grasses connect each other to form a wide green plain, local governments have been playing the role of beautifully beautifully embroidering the tapestry underlying the trilateral relations. The Governors Association of Korea, of which I belong to, has also carried out various projects and programs to promote cooperation among the local governments of Korea, China, and Japan. Since today's symposium is a venue to discuss ways to increase local and regional exchanges among the three countries, I think it would be meaningful to introduce the project relevant to this topic. The association will hold the 20 second Korea-China-Japan Local Governments Conference this coming November. This conference is a project that we have been working with for more than 20 years together with the Chinese People's Association for Friendship with Foreign Countries and Council of Local Authorities for International Relations of Japan. It has served as a forum of cooperation for the local governments of the three countries to come together to share concerns about common challenges and to seek ideas from each other's policies. Last year's meeting could not be held due to COVID-19. However, although we are still in the midst of a pandemic, we felt the need to maintain the spirit and drive a cooperation and thus will be holding this year's conference in a webinar format. We would like to ask for your interest and support. COVID-19 has hindered travel and exchange and turned our open global village into a space of isolation. However, I believe this is the time when the power of solidarity among the local governments of Korea, China, and Japan can be demonstrated. I believe the various exchange and cooperation cases to be discussed at today's symposium will serve as another opportunity to strengthen solidarity as we consider 
uh, together solutions and find the way forward together. The wisdom of go alone if you want to go fast, go together if you want to go far has never been more appropriate than now as the free flow of exchange is no longer possible. I truly hope we can develop ways and set the path of exchange that befits with this with COVID era and thus have our trilateral cooperation expand in both width and depth as we do so. Thank you very much. Once again, thank you for your kind words and support, for without it, this symposium would not have been possible. Now, I'd like to officially begin today's event by introducing our moderator, Professor Yang ki -ho. Professor Yang currently teaches at Song Gong Hui University, while also serving as a member of the Advisory Committee for the National Security Council of the Blue House. Professor Yang's expertise in local government exchange is rooted in decades of work in the field, as well as his numerous works in the discipline, such as globalism and local politics, Korean local government diplomacy, and globalizations of local localities, to name a few. We could not have found anyone better suited to moderate this symposium, and we are extremely delighted that he could join us today. Professor Yang, Please go ahead when you are ready. Ni hao. Konnichiwa. Annyeonghashimikka. Good afternoon, ladies and gentlemen. I am Yang Ki Ho, the moderator of uh, the presentation session. I would like to congratulate the 10th anniversary of TCS. And it is also a great honor to serve as your moderator today. For the past uh, decade and decades, We've seen peace, prosperity, and development amongst the three countries. And if you look at the total output of the three countries, it's 20% uh, of total GDP of the world. And if you look at the population of the three countries, it accounts for 20% of uh, the total population of the world. In 2018, the Pyeongchang Winter Olympics and the Tokyo Olympics of 2020, and in 2022, the Beijing Olympics start to be held. And you can see that uh, these international events indicate uh, the great achievements made by the three countries. Today, uh, I believe I can say that many civic groups, uh, local governments and associations have made all of this possible. Uh, the success and the development of the three countries rely on the hands of local governments, as well as the exchange and cooperation and solidarity amongst the peoples of the three countries. And in that aspect, I can say that uh, the exchange and international cooperation of the local governments uh, were key, and I want to extend my gratitude to all of those that have made this possible, and I'd like to pay tribute to your efforts. Uh, we are meeting the 10th anniversary of TCS. And we want to understand what kind of measures would be possible amid COVID-19 for sustainable cooperation and collaboration amongst the local governments. And I would like to also mention that it's important to ponder on how we can develop the theme of Culture City of East Asia program. So we would like to talk about these topics on, throughout the session. And we also have case examples. We have uh, Yangzhou City. Kitakyushu city of Japan and uh, Jeju province that are to sh share their insights uh, from their model cases. We have 80 minutes allotted for this presentation and Q&A and hope that we can engage in insightful discussions and debate. But I would like to say that if you do have any questions in between, or if you have any comments, please feel free to use the chat box to post your questions and comments. Uh, the Secretariat will be bringing these together to make sure that your questions and comments will be answered. And I do want to introduce uh, all the speakers. However, because uh, this is a hybrid format, I would like to briefly call upon the speakers and panelists one by one, when in the order of the agenda. Uh, first, we have uh, Secretary General of CIFCA, Chin Bo Mi, who also delivered his congratulatory remarks uh, to provide us with a presentation. Uh, so he had a pre-recording of his congratulatory remarks. Uh, and he also has a recorded presentation, but uh, uh, we will have for the Q&A session Ms. Lu Hyo Jiang, Deputy Director of CIFCA, to answer any questions with regard to the presentation. So then let us now listen to the presentation by Secretary General Ching Bo of CIFCA.
Thank you very much. It's a great pleasure for me to take part in uh, this meaningful symposium. I'd like to deliver a presentation on the theme of achievements and prospects of the CJK cooperation. And my presentation is divided into four parts. The first part of the presentation is the background and overview of the CJK cooperation. The three countries are close neighbors and important cooperation partners for each other. During the East Asia Cooperation uh, Leadership Meeting held to overcome the Asian financial crisis 20 years ago, the leaders of the three countries held an informal meeting and so the seeds for trilateral cooperation. Now, more than 20 years later, the cooperation between Korea, China, and Japan cultivated through joint efforts and now has grown into a leafy tree bearing fruits such as the Trilateral Summit 21, ministerial level meetings, and the TCS system. In recent years, the friendly exchanges and cooperation between uh, the three countries in various fields, especially amongst uh, local governments, have increased significantly and they have brought tangible benefits to the people of the three countries. Uh, before the epidemic, uh, the annual number of personal exchanges between the three countries exceeded 30 billion. As of 2020, there are more than 60,000 Japanese and South Korean companies in China, and the total trade volume between China and, and Japan and, and South Korea increased by more than 600 billion US dollars. A number of sister cities uh, between the three countries uh, grew rapidly, and now the total number of sister cities between and the three countries uh, has reached the 458, and more than 85% of them are active in exchanges. CJK Friendship Cities Conference, which started in 1999, has been successfully held for 20 years so far, and has become an important exchange platform for mutual learning and development of the local government of the three countries. The second part of my presentation is about the characteristics of the CJK local cooperation. Throughout the years of exchanges and cooperation between the local governments of the three countries, uh, the following three characteristics are mainly found. One is the active involvement of local governments driven by uh, economy and the trade sector. China, Japan, and South Korea are located in Northeast Asia and are important parts of regional cooperation, occupying an important uh, position in the global economy and international economic and trade cooperation. Most of the local cooperation between the three countries stems from economic and trade needs, and they set up economic and trade representative offices in each other's country with a complete system, mechanism, and staffing. In recent years, as the scale of trade investment and personal exchanges between the three countries continues to grow, resolution of trade barriers and realization of growth potential of intra-regional trade have become the Companies of, of the three countries. Last year, the Qingdao area of Sandong Pilot Free Trade Zone opened a special consumption zone for uh, China, Japan, and South Korea at the end of 2020. The zone has gathered 1,174 Japanese and South Korean uh, enterprises with a total investment of nearly 15 billion US dollars. There are 27 Fortune 500 companies from Japan and Korea, and they have invested in 51 projects in the zone. The second characteristic is the youth of cultural ties to expand the areas of exchanges. The friendship between the three countries not only has profound historical and cultural backgrounds, but also the advantages of geographical proximity and cultural uh, connections. The cultural exchanges between the three countries have always been rich and diverse, covering music, song and dance, calligraphy, painting, flower arrangement, tea art, and other fields, and have been made uh, through a number of influential platforms, including the culture uh, capital of uh, East Asia and CJK Culture Industry Forum. In recent years, cultural exchanges have become an important starting point for trilateral local cooperation. Third is the long-term and stable mechanism centering on youth exchanges. Compared with the local cooperation in other countries, the youth exchanges in local cooperation between the three countries are particularly noticeable. Based on the existing friendship city relations, several schools in the three countries formed a cooperative relationship and operated the CJK student exchange programs and cooperation in the educational field has achieved great results. There are a few successful cases of the early CJK youth exchange programs and projects. For example, the CJK Youth Games have been held for 27 years since its first uh, 
Games in 1993, and the CJK Youth International Painting and Calligraphy Exhibition has been held for 11 years since its first exhibition in 2011. Continuous trilateral youth exchanges are adding strength to trilateral local cooperation as a future asset. And the third part of my presentation is about the uh, achievements of CJK local cooperation. Uh, for the past years, the CJK local uh, cooperation um, has made a great achievements in the following three e areas. First, it has effectively enhanced the understanding and friendship between the peoples of the three countries. Local cooperation between the three countries has promoted the concept of one unity in Asia, uh, has connected the people of the three countries uh, to continuously enhance mutual understanding and friendship and promote the consolidation and development of uh, CJK relations and the maintenance of regional peace and stability. Secondly, it has effectively promoted mutually beneficial cooperation and development between the three countries. Local governments of uh, the three countries are generally uh, committed to promoting interconnectedness in logistics, transportation, infrastructure, construction, and by linking individual visual plans and projects, they strive to form a mutually beneficial economic and trade partnership. With the signing of RCEP, local cooperation between the three countries will gain a new momentum, accelerating the negotiation process of the CJK free trade agreement. The third is a strong support for the three countries' joint fight against the epidemic. After the outbreak of a uh, COVID-19 pandemic, the three countries have helped each other and overcome the difficulties together, fully mobilizing the strength of local sister cities, enterprises, and all walks of life, not only giving each other warm condolences, but also sending a large amount of quarantine materials to areas where the spread of COVID-19 uh, is severe. It has become an exemplary model for global quarantine by demonstrating the positive energy of unity, friendship, and uh, cooperation. And the fourth part is about the challenges and the solutions of trilateral local cooperation. Currently, the world goes through a dramatic change along with a, a big epidemic. Local cooperation uh, between the three countries uh, is also facing many challenges, such as the excessive number of sister cities, local exchanges concentrated in economically developed areas only, and the severe barriers to uh, offline exchanges due to uh, the pandemic. And therefore, I would like to make uh, the following three suggestions. Uh, the first is to create a new exchange framework of Friendship City Plus. While actively utilizing existing provincial level sister cities to promote the city level sister uh, city relations, utilizing municipal level sister cities to promote the district and county level sister cities, uh, thus achieving multi level uh, friendship uh, architecture or the structure uh, between uh, the three countries. Based on the trilateral economic and Trade cooperation model uh, between Guangzhou, Auckland, and LA. Bilateral friendship uh, city exchanges need to be expanded to trilateral or even uh, multilateral friendship city exchanges. The second is to seize new opportunities in emerging industries. China offers the new way of thinking for development and accelerates the construction of new infrastructure represented by 5G, big data, and artificial intelligence, and empowering urban development with the technological innovation. Underdeveloped Western regions and the cities also strive to build a large-scale clean energy bases, taking advantage of wind, solar, hydropower, and mineral resources in their regions. The three countries can tap the potential of emerging industries, strengthening exchanges and cooperation in the areas such as high-end manufacturing, energy conservation, environmental protection, medical care, and the digital industrialization. The third is to vigorously develop a new model of cloud-based exchange this year and next two years are CZK Culture and Sports Exchange Year and Korea-China Culture Exchange Year. Next year marks the 50th anniversary of the normalization of diplomatic uh, ties between China and Japan and the 30th anniversary of the establishment of diplomatic ties between Korea and China. Tokyo and Beijing will host Olympic Games one after another and in 20. 24, South Korea will host Youth Winter Olympic Games in Gangwon-do, and the CJK relations will usher in an important development opportunity. We must make a full use of the new model of international exchanges under a pandemic situation and explore to has the impact of the pandemic on international exchanges by holding cloud conferences, cloud exhibitions, and cloud signing. Thank you very much. Thank you, uh, Director Ching Bo-ming, for the uh, past 30 
years, there have been many exchanges at the central government level and at local government level, and there have been great achievements uh, made from um, these exchanges. And I believe that uh, the joint efforts made by the three countries made uh, those achievements possible. And we have Yangju City, a uh, cultural city of East Asia of 2020, and Mr. Wang Yuqin, Deputy Director, uh, Foreign Affairs Office of Yangju Municipal People's Government, will be giving us a presentation on the local cooperation that was conducted. Distinguished participant, good afternoon. I am Yang Miu Chin, Deputy Director of the Foreign Affairs Office of Yangzhou Municipal People's Government. It is a great honor to attend this symposium. Yangzhou, since ancient times, has been geographically a crossroads between southern and northern China, as well as a crossroads of the maritime and land silk roads. Thus, Yangzhou is located in an area that occupies a very important position in the history of cultural exchanges among China, Japan, and Korea. Yangzhou City has been promoting in-depth exchanges with Japan and Korea for many years and has established successful cooperative relationships with many cities in both countries. I would like to thank the Chinese People's Association for Friendship with Foreign Countries and TCS for inviting Yangzhou City to the symposium on promoting trilateral cooperation at the local level today. I believe this is an acknowledgement of the achievements of Yangzhou City and a new starting point for further deepening exchanges with Japan and Korea. From now on, allow me to briefly introduce the projects that Yangzhou City has been promoting with Japan and Korea. First is on the beginning of foreign exchange with historical figures uh, serving as a link. Yangzhou has a special historical relationship with Japan and Korea. Japan and Korea engaged in frequent exchanges, which resulted in many achievements uh, with the great master Jin Zin, who left friendly historical records with Japan and Korea, and philosoph philosopher Chi Chiwon serving as uh, the link in between. At the uh, earnest request of two monks, Ye Wei and Fu Shou, who came to study in Tang China, uh, from Japan during the Tang Dynasty, Great Master Jian Zin, after six challenging attempts, finally crossed the sea and spread Chinese lushu, medicine, sculpture, calligraphy, and architecture to Japan. He is the pioneer in China-Japan's friendly exchanges. Yangzhou has had frequent exchanges with Japan throughout its history due to its connection with Great Master Jing Zin. The most notable are the following three monuments. The first is the stone lantern of Yangzhou's Daiming Temple. Back in 1980, this lantern was presented and lit in person by Abbot Monk Morimoto of uh, Toshiodaji Temple, who donated this masterpiece uh, when the exhibition of the seated stone statue of Jin Zin enshrined at to Toshiodaji Temple took place in Yangzhou, the hometown of Great Master Jin Zin. It is paired with another stone lantern that stands in Toshiodaji Temple, and the pair of lanterns still uh, stay lit until now, symbolizing the everlasting friendship of the people of China and Japan. The second is the French uh, ship of friendship, which is a model of Great Master Jin Zin's ship. In 2008, former Chinese President Hu Jintao donated this artwork to Japan's Toshio Daiji Temple. This was made by referring to the artifacts excavated from ships during the Tang Dynasty at the Yangzhou Lacquerware Factory. The third is the work of calligraphy titled Spirit of Mind Connecting Hearts to Hearts. This is a handwritten work left by former Chinese Prime Minister Yukio Hukuda at Tadaming Temple of Yangzhou in 2014. Furthermore, to commemorate and uphold the spirit of Great Master Chen Xin, the city of Yangzhou is established Jiang Zin uh, Memorial Hall, Jen Zin Libra Library, and Jen Zin Buddhist Academy. Uh, the city also introduced an international half marathon named Jen Zin International Half Marathon, which is now a gold label event of the world athletics. Another prominent figure is... Che Chiwon, who is known as the master of Tonggu Confucian and father of Tonggu culture, he came to study from Shila to Tang at the age of 12 and at 18 passed uh, the, uh, the, the exam of Chinese civil um, service exams, um, the coveted Jinsi degree. He came to Yangzhou at the end of the Tang dynasty and held a government office for five years and while at office wrote the Kyokhwang Somun or appeal to rebel Huang Chao, gaining him fame. Since 2001, Yangzhou has been promoting exchanges with Korea in all directions um, and with Chi Chi Won as a link, uh, it's been striving to become the center of cultural exchange between China and Korea. On October 15, 2007, 
The Chechi Wan Memorial Hall was established in Yangzhou in the River Scenic Area, which is the first foreign celebrity memorial to be ratified by the Chinese Ministry of Foreign Affairs. It is a major platform for cultural exchange between Yangzhou and Korea. Every year, October 15th is designated as the China-Korea Friendship Exchange Day in Yangzhou. Even now, approximately 100 members of Korea's Gyeongju Choi clan visit the, the Chechi Wan Memorial Hall on October 15th every year to hold a memorial service for Choi Chi Wan. It's been more than 20 years uh, since this was done. With Choi Chi Wan serving as a medium, Yangzhou City and Korea are pushing ahead with close humanities exchange. For example, both sides dispatch mutual delegations to participate in the Choi Chi Wan Academic Research Conference and co-hosted a calligraphy and painting exhibition commemorating Choi Chi Wan and produced the documentary Choi Chi Wan. In the history of cultural exchange between Yangzhou and Korea, there is also the moving story of Yang Wan and Kim jong hee Yang Wan being Kim's teacher, but close friends nevertheless. Kim jong hee also known as Korea's Wang Hee-ji, was deeply influenced by Lian Yuan in his notion of Confucius, Confucian classics, epigraphy, and calligraphy. His calligraphy overflowing with power is called Chusa Che or Chusa writing style. He also used the Ho or pen name Wan Dang, which means disciple of Lian Yuan. Yangzhou City has planned and promoted a series of humanities exchange activities based on the special historical relationship related uh, to Leung Yuan and Kim Jong Hee and founded on the deep friendship between the two that is praised to this day. In 2018, Yangzhou completed filming of Liang Yan and Kim Jong Hee's documentary titled High as a Mountain and Endless as Flowing Water, which was first aired on CCTV on April 18, 2019. And uh, we have been continuing to expand the scope of friendship with Japan and Korea based on sister cities. Since the 1980s, Yangzhou City has been actively promoting overseas exchange. It has established sisterhood ties with Karatsu City, Atsuki City, and Nara City of Japan, and uh, Yongin City and Gyeongju City of Korea, and forged friendship cooperation city relations with Yeoju City, Jeju City, and Daegu City, and Gunsan City. Thus far, Yangzhou City has been at the forefront of setting a precedent for joint exchanges and integrated development amongst the friendship cities of China, Japan, and Korea. As early as 1993, on the first anniversary of the establishment of diplomatic ties between China and Korea, Karatsu City of Japan, a sister city of Yangzhou City, introduced Yeozu City, a sister city on the Korean side, to Yangzhou City, opening a new chapter in friendship exchange between the three countries and three cities. The China-Japan-Korea Sister City Go Tournament, which has been held alternately every year in, three, in the three cities, have already been successfully held 21 times in a row. In 2008 and 2010, Yangzhou City also forged sister city relations with Gyeongju City, Korea, the hometown of Chechiwon, and Nara City, Japan, where great master Jen Zen arrived, respectively, opening a new chapter in exchange and cooperation amongst the three cities as mutual sister cities. In recognition of this achievement, in 2018, it was awarded the China-Japan South Korea Excellent Cooperation Award between sister cities from the Chinese People's Association for Friendship with Foreign Countries. In 2019, Yangzhou City, based on the achievements of exchanges with Japan and Korea, was designated as the 2020 Culture City of East Asia along with Suncheon City of Korea Korea and Kitakushu City of Japan. Through this, Yangju City was able to obtain the best reputation in promoting trilateral exchange at the local level and to have a special presence among the Chinese provincial cities that ex engage in exchange with Japan and Korea. Next uh, is, or third, is on disease prevention cooperation and the beginning of cloud diplomacy in the post-COVID era. Let me begin with the saying by Chechiwan that goes, Tao is not far from the person, and the person does not differ from country to, to country. In early 2020, amid the COVID situation, Karatsu City, Atsuki City of Japan, and Kitakyushu City, another culture city of East Asia, along with Gyeongju City, Jeju City, and Gunsan City of Korea, took the lead and donated significant amounts of medical supplies, including 44,000 masks and 600 protective gear sets to Yangzhou City to support Yangzhou's uh, response to COVID-19 and its decision. Uh, disease prevention efforts. Later in April, when the COVID situation in Japan and Korea became serious, Yangzhou City actively provided medical supplies, including 100... Uh, 
and 35,000 surgical masks to Atsika City, Karatsu City, and Gyeongju City and participated in the disease prevention and control efforts and also left a beautiful legacy of exchange and cooperation with the sister cities. Although people-to-people -people exchanges are at a stop due to COVID, we can meet online with our Japanese and Korean friends through the internet. In September 2020, during the World Canal Cities Forum, the mayors of Kitakushu, Japan, and Suncheon, South Korea, respectively recorded and sent congratulatory videos and also shared case studies with conference participants. In October 2020, Yangzhou Mayor Zhang Baijun sent a congr congratulatory video to the Citizens Day commemoration event held in Kunzan City. On April 29, 2021, Mayor Chang Baozuan participated in the Gyeongju Sister Friendship City video conference held in Gyeongju City. In addition, the 2021 International Horticulture Exposition is now being held in Yangzhou City. A total of 25 overseas cities and international organizations are participating to offer world-class cultural exchanges, landscaping, and floriculture festivals to domestic and foreign tourists. I am very pleased that the sister cities of Japan and Korea actively support the Yangzhou International Horticulture Exposition. Nara City and Atsuki City in Japan, Suncheon City, Gyeongju City, and Yongin City of Korea participate in the exhibition in the form of hosting outdoor and indoor exhibition halls, respectively. As a next step, Yangzhou City will continue to focus on the theme of building a culture city of East Asia and promote culture city tourism in partnership with culture cities through meticulous planning. In addition, we will strive to build an outstanding uh, culture city by increasing our brand awareness and market influence as Yangzhou, a great place to be, so that Yangzhou's cultural and tourism industry can take a new leap forward. Next year will be the 50th anniversary of the establishment of diplomatic ties between China and Japan and the 30th anniversary of diplomatic ties between China and Korea. We look forward to taking this opportunity to promote all encompassing cooperation in each field with sister cities of Japan and Korea. And I would like to take this opportunity to send you an invitation of spring. We hope that you will visit Yangzhou soon and experience the beautiful scenery that Li Pai, the great poet of the Tang Dynasty, remarked, I am leaving for Yangzhou in the blooming spring of March. It is a great honor to participate in this symposium and we will be waiting for you in Yangzhou. Thank you very much. Thank you very much, Wang Yuqin, Deputy Director, for your presentation. Uh, after seeing the beautiful pictures of Yangzhou, I truly do want to visit Yangzhou City once uh, we overcome COVID-19. And since ancient times, you've talked about great master um, Zhen Zin uh, that visited Japan and also Che Chi Wan that visited Yangzhou. So you can see that Yangzhou City is truly a bridge amongst the three countries from ancient times till now. So I was able to understand the history of exchanges of Yangzhou City and it was truly a moving presentation. Once again, thank you very much for that uh, insightful presentation and let us now move on. Now I'd like to invite our next presenter, uh, who is from Japan and deliver a presentation from the perspective of uh, Japan. Uh, let me invite uh, Mr. Minju Doshihiro, Managing Director of the Japan Center for International Exchange. Good afternoon, um, ladies and gentlemen, and it's been a while since I um, have met you, Professor Young, and it's good to see your face again. And I work for an organization called uh, Japan Center for International Exchange, and currently I am not involved in sister city projects. But after graduating from university, I worked for Hyogo Prefecture Office. And at that time, I was dispatched uh, to a graduate school in Washington State, an American sister city of Hyogo Prefecture, and I studied uh, there. Uh, I, since then, I, I have continued to work in international exchange. Uh, remembering uh, the help that I had from many people uh, in uh, the U.S. sister city. And personally, my life was determined by the experience uh, uh, that I had in the sister city. And now uh, let me refer to the slides that I have prepared. Um, we all know that uh, the local the exchanges among the three countries is very important. And... As we all know, there have 
been uh, certain issues uh, occurred in terms of diplomatic relations between Japan and Korea and uh, Japan and China. So uh, the diplomatic ties become sour between uh, these three countries. That is uh, one thing that we need to consider when we uh, talk about uh, the future sister city relations among the three uh, countries. Uh, first of all, I'd like to point out that the diplomatic uh, relations are uh, different from the sister city relations. We all know that the diplomatic relations focus on national interests of each country with a focus on the national security and economy. And also uh, the uh, diplomatic uh, relations involve a win and lose game with a short-term um, vision. And mostly, mostly diplomats and um, the military people engage in um, the foreign relations or diplomatic uh, relations. Uh, but the case is different for sister city relations. Actually, the sister city relations uh, depend on mutual trust and mutual interests. And also, uh, the sister city relations promotes win-win um, relations, aiming at friendship and self-empowerment. The term sister stands for uh, the, the nature of uh, sister city relations, uh, which is uh, about a family and one team and spirit. And also, there are certain cases where the sister city relation related activities uh, make a huge success uh, embracing and the people of uh, three countries uh, closer. So as I mentioned before, the sister city relations they depend on mutual trust and as a kind of long-term relations actively participated by civilians. Particularly in times when the diplomatic relations are sour, uh, like uh, the current time, we need to think about uh, the very fundamental uh, nature of uh, sister city relations. The first sister city relations between Japan and Korea started back in 1965, or rather 68, between uh, Hagi City of Japan and Ulsan City of Korea. And Hagi Mayor uh, visited Korea as a delegation member in 1962 and asked Ulsan Mayor uh, to uh, force a sister city relations. And also, uh, the first sister uh, city relation between uh, Japan and China uh, made uh, in 1973, and even before uh, the normalization of diplomatic ties between the two countries, uh, the local uh, government leader or the mayor uh, of Japanese uh, Kobe City visited China as a member of the sports team delegation and asked uh, the Chinese city mayor uh, to force a sister city relations. So the sister city relations depend on the pioneering spirit of civilians and local governments. Let me talk about uh, the U.S. case, and due to a time constraint, I cannot go over the details of uh, that case. But still, uh, this U.S. sister city relation case also emphasized the importance of uh, the friendship-based relations and also the active civil participation based on the friendship between uh, the civilians of the two local uh, cities are the very fundamental, uh, the spirit of uh, the sister city relations. And also in the midst of the COVID-19 pandemic, we need to think about uh, what kind of uh, possibilities we can explore to further develop sister city relations when and the pandemic situation gets resolved. 
There are a few common uh, tasks ahead of the three countries, uh, such as SDG, Sustainable Development Goals. And these uh, SDGs are well known, and um, actually they are actively promoted by the local governments as well as the central governments of the three countries. I believe that SDG can be a good comment on the topic and such, uh, then the local uh, schools and the civilians can uh, discuss it together uh, through trilateral on the exchanges. And also, uh, there is another common issue uh, which can be jointly discussed and tackled, uh, such as aging population. And another case in point is immigration issue. We all uh, know that uh, there are increasing number of uh, immigrants coming into uh, Japan and Korea and China as well. And I believe that local government officials deal with uh, the immigration issue at a deeper level, and I believe uh, such kind of common issues will gain their importance uh, more and more in the future. And as I mentioned before, uh, the sister city relations are forced by local uh, governments. However, the civil participation matters a lot to the development of sister city relations. In this context, we need to revisit uh, the fundamental value of sister city relations and the central governments of uh, the three countries should realize the importance of the sister city relations, no matter what uh, the diplomatic relations stand uh, for uh, a specific uh, point of time. Let me take a, a detailed example of a sister city relation. Um, it's a relation between a city in Australia and a city in Japan. This is an actual case, and, and there are large monitors connected online in each other's uh, cities, uh, through which uh, people can always see the streets and people of the other city, and they can wave and talk to each other while looking at uh, each other. This kind of exchange it became possible thanks to the advancement of uh, IT technology. And another idea that I want to share with you today is a, a local exchange based on karaoke. So we all know that uh, the Korean people and Japanese people and uh, Chinese people can sing uh, the songs of each other's uh, country. So we are talking about informal uh, the exchanges participated by ordinary people. So this kind of uh, the exchange, such as uh, the karaoke, uh, the tournament, and, and some other uh, events participated by ordinary people can further promote uh, the local exchanges, including sister city relations. Thank you very much, uh, Director uh, Menjo Doshihiro, for your insightful uh, presentation. Uh, Director Menju has engaged himself in uh, local exchanges in uh, local uh, governments for a long time. And also, he has uh, a uh, excellent insight uh, into uh, the very nature of local exchanges and, and the future uh, prospects for those local changes. And also, he provided us with uh, excellent suggestions for the development of local exchanges. Now, uh, let us uh, uh, go um, invite the next uh, presenter. Uh, Kitakashu City uh, has been designated as the culture city of East Asia for 2020. Uh, and uh, with Incheon, Tairan, and Tikakushu, I know that there is a museum uh, exchange program in place. So we have Hibino uh, Toshinobu, who is the curator and chief of the history session of Kitakushu Museum of National History and Human History. Are you ready for your presentation? Yes, I am Hibino from Kitakushu. Can you hear me well? Yes, uh, thank you. Then let me now begin my presentation. I uh, will be uh, presenting on the Museum Exchange uh, Program uh, under the name of uh, Museum Exchange Program Rooted in History. So I would like to talk about uh, the 
Rusun Museum and the Incheon Metropolitan City Museum uh, and what we are doing with these two mu museums. Kitakyushu City, uh, Fukuoka Prefecture, was formed in 1963 by the merger of five cities of Moji, Kokura, Awakamatsu, Yahata, and Tobata. Kitakyushu City, with the normalization of ties between Japan and China in 1972, serving as an opportunity, became friendship cities with Dailan City, Liaoning Province, China, which was uh, noted to have a similar city style. Uh, in the past, uh, between Muji and Thailand, a historical background exists where they operated the Ilman Ferry, the name coming from the letter Il from the word Ilbon or Japan and the letter of Man from Manju or Manchuria. In addition, in 1988, Seoul Olympic Games served as a conduit uh, to forge sister city relationships with Incheon Metropolitan City in Korea, which was noted to have a similar city style and character. Uh, the Kitakyushu Museum of Natural History and Human History opened in 2002, signed an East Asia Friendship Museum Agreement in 2010 with the museums of the sister cities, which includes Incheon Metropolitan City Museum of Incheon Metropolitan City, as well as Yosun Lucian Museum of Thailand City, and thus pushing ahead with exchanges. However, even before that, there were mutual exchanges among the museums. One of the predecessors of our museum is the Kitakyushu Municipal Museum of Natural History, and it has engaged in specimen and exhibition exchanges with Thailand Natural History Museum in China. And afterwards, in 2008, Kitakyushu City and Incheon Metropolitan City held an exchange exhibition between our museum and Incheon City Museum to commemorate the 20th anniversary of the Sister City Agreement. In addition, the Lushenku district of Dalin City, which remained closed to foreigners for a long time, uh, but opened its doors in 2009, which led to the signing of a friendship ex exchange agreement between our museum and Lushen Museum. Uh, in the East Asia Friendship Museum Agreement concluded in 2010, the exchange period was stipulated as five years, and once a year, the three museums took turns holding the museum director meeting and working level conferences. The main contents of collaboration included curator dispatch and exchanges and exchange of exhibitions. Our museum curator researched the collections of the two museums of Incheon and Lushin, and vast amounts of old photos held by Lushin Museum were taken by sound South Manchuria Railway Company. However, since its existence was not known at all in Japan, it was an academically important discovery in the study of modern history of East Asia. In 2011, 112 photos taken by South Manchuria Railway uh, and owned by Lushin Museum were carefully selected and displayed for the first time in Japan in a special exhibition under the title Dailin Scenery of City Exhibition of Ancient Photos from Lushin Museum's Collection. In 2013, masterpieces such as paintings and bronze mirror artifacts owned by the Incheon City Museum and the Lushin Museum were exhibited in Kitakyushu City. Since 2012, the three museums have rotated to hold traveling exhibitions introducing the modern history of each city throughout reprodu through reproductions and photo panels. This exchange program was terminated in 2015 as stipulated in the agreement, but in the same year, a new agreement on the East Asia Friendship Museum Term 2 was signed and exchanges are continuing accordingly. Term 2 of the exchange program with the unified theme of East Asia life and culture is held as a traveling exhibition once every two years for six years to introduce the distinctive and unique artifacts, materials, and collections of each museum. Based on our vintage cloth uh, collection. Our museum organized a traveling exhibition on clothing and the Lucian Museum based on the chopsticks collection organized a traveling exhibition on food. And Incheon Metropolitan Museum put together a traveling exhibition on housing, in particular the toilet. Let me now move on to the five uh, unique uh, achievements of this exchange program. To summarize the significance and achievements of the museum exchanges of the three cities, first I would have to uh, talk about the survey on newly discovered materials such as photos uh, of South Manchuria Railway previously unknown to Japan and displayed for the first time in Japan. The fact that this study and exhibition was possible was a great academic achievement. In the photo you see, there seems to be a glass plate still remaining, but what I surveyed was a photo card projected onto the screen. And the Japanese uh, Yumiuri Shimun had also reported extensively on this finding and then wanted to do a full-scale study after the exhibition, but unfortunately, I haven't been able to do so. Uh, moving back uh, to the slides, let me now move on to 
Uh, the second significant uh, achievement of the exchange, and that is uh, that it has tried to clarify the cultural history of East Asia with a focus on arts, crafts, food, lifestyle, uh, culture of food, clothing, uh, housing through unique artifacts and collections. There are many exhibitions with the theme of individual cultures of Korea and China, but it is rare to find an exhibition that introduces uh, both or all the culture of all three countries. Uh, based on the museum's uh, Coco Vintage Clock Collection, the exhibition Japanese Spirit Through Kimono, held in 2016, presented uh, at uh, Incheon City Museum and Lujin Museum as a traveling exhibition. Lujin Museum took advantage of its extensive space and cases to create a spacious display. The Incheon Metropolitan City Museum made good use of the internal structure of the museum to express the Japanese atmosphere. It was an interesting experience because it also offered the chance to learn about the characteristics of each museum. The third achievement is the exchange on education dissemination programs. During this traveling exhibition, workshops were held at the Incheon Metropolitan City Museum and Lucian Museum to experience making and weaving a textile called Kokura Ori, a traditional craft of Kitakushu. I heard that there were not many uh, of such attempts in China until then, and Lucian Museum held the first workshop for children, attracting attention from the local media. After the members of the Busen Koko Ori Research Group or Kenkyu Kai in Kikakutu City gave preliminary guidance to the Lucian Museum staff, the staff tried it out themselves with the help of the research group members. Uh, you can see uh, the picture on the left and on the right uh, is the project with Incheon. Korean museums such as Incheon Metropolitan City Museum are very active in disseminating education and I heard that the members of the research group and local volunteers as they cooperated in running the workshop learned a lot from one another. Uh, the fourth achievement is the uh, joint research on creating multilingual exhibition descriptions. The multilingualization of collections is not a simple translation service, but a translation tailored to their interests and knowledge by clarifying what overseas visitors want to know and what the collection wants to inform the, uh, the, the visitors. We engaged in joint research on the permanent exhibition of our museum with Incheon Metropolitan City Museum and produced an exhibition commentary pamphlet for the permanent exhibition in Korean and Japanese re respectively. During this uh, that time, two themes were selected, namely learning about the history of Hitakushu and experiencing Japanese culture. I believe this is the, the mission of the permanent exhibition of our museum's history section. The East Asia Friendship Museum Exchange Program is an exchange of museums uh, among three countries and three cities, and it seems to be the only case that is being promoted outside the capital city. Therefore, this case of international exchange amongst public museums can be a meaningful model case. So let's uh, think about what role public museums in international exchange can play and what possibilities exist. Uh, the three cities, including Kitakushu, Incheon, and Dailin, ha have a similar history as a modern industrial city and port city. Based on this historical commonality, the three city museums can discover historical resources centered on modern history, promote the value, and share and visualize and disseminate the information. And by doing so, the museum can be the liaison of exchange that contribute to establishing and expanding the foundation for historical research and historical awareness. Furthermore, the museums can deeply explore the history of each city under the context of East Asian world history. In addition, each museum should properly introduce and inform not only the history and culture of each city, but also the history and culture of each country. It is uh, for that reason that uh, the experiencing Japanese culture was chosen as a mission of the museum's permanent uh, exhibition commentary or description. This is also the role of the museum as a cultural and tourism hub that Japan is promoting nationally. As such, museums have an important role and potential to play as a window or liaison for international exchange. Incheon Metropolitan City and Thailand City has many icons, texts, and drawings in Japanese, and the cities uh, felt free to 
exchange questions and answers about reading and the interpretation and the accumulation of these efforts leads to improved mutual trust. So in my opinion, the daily interaction among the curators of the three museums is of utmost importance. Kita Kyushu City is also pushing ahead uh, with uh, various exchanges uh, with cities in Korea and China through Culture City of East Asia 2021 20, uh, 2020 to 2021 and the Organization for the East Asian Economic Development Platform. In addition, Kita Kyushu City, based on its strengths, has also actively promoted international exchange through advanced technology in industry and environment. The strength of Kita Kyushu City has been accumulated through overcoming the pollution that Kita Kyushu City experienced as it developed into an industrial city. International exchange at the local level seems to be uh, seems to work at its best to achieve unique results when exchange uh, that make use of their respective strengths and cultural exchanges rooted in the history are intertwined. Uh, so that is all for my presentation. Thank you very much for your attention. Uh, yes, uh, Chief Hibino Toshinobu, thank you very much for the presentation. It was uh, very interesting. Incheon, Thailand, and Kita Kyushu are the gateway to modernity. They are key port cities. And not only that, these are key locations to understand the history of the trilateral countries. And uh, in that aspect, we can see that you are engaging in meaningful museum exchange, and I would like to pay tribute to your efforts. And the reason why these programs are important is because it has to do with the future generation. The future generation do not have clear awareness of the history of these trilateral countries, and I believe that this will offer the opportunity to gain the interest of the future generation on the relationship, on this trilateral relationship, and I wish uh, this program flourishes further in the future. Once again, thank you very much. And to let us now move on to the presentations by our Korean participants. <coughs> we have a CEO Cha Tae Gun of um, Regional uh, Culture and Development Agency, or the ICDA. He will deliver a presentation on the most important topic of today's symposium, which is uh, the routinization of international cultural exchange through the Culture City Initiative. Uh, Mr. Cha, please go ahead with your presentation. I'd like to take this opportunity to extend my greetings to all my friends in Japan and China, and I wish the good health in the midst of um, the COVID-19 pandemic. And I also wish for uh, the successful uh, resolution of uh, the current pandemic. Uh, and I just uh, took up my mask to extend my greetings to all my friends in China and Japan, and now I uh, wear my mask again. And I'd like to talk about a culture city project here in Korea. Actually, the, the project is uh, pursued and promoted by the central government based on the relevant uh, legislation. And the initiative has uh, been promoted for the past uh, four to five years. Before I talk about the specifics of a culture city initiative or project, I would like to talk about uh, the the definition of a culture. Culture should be regarded as a set of a distinctive spiritual, material, intellectual, and emotional features of a society. So it has a very broad and comprehensive meaning. And also, uh, the concept of a culture city should be defined with a new language. Uh, the culture city is centering around the civilians for the civil uh, participation. And also, the culture city involves the changing rules and processes, not uh, uh, the ideas uh, themselves. And also, it requires collaboration and sharing for citizenship. When it comes to the elements of uh, the culture city, we need to consider three elements, culture, heritage, uh, which involves the history and culture of the city and community. And also, the second element is a response to social changes, including the social crisis and transformation of life. And also pursuit of the values of postmodern city and life, uh, 
is a big social change and that should be responded uh, through a uh, culture city initiative. And the third element is uh, the citizenship, the emergence and the rise of creative and autonomous citizens uh, uh, is a very important um, element or the factor of a culture city. And also the sense of place and the social awareness or localization uh, should be introduced as uh, the strategies of, of the culture city. And also we need to consider everydayness of culture city initiative. Uh, we are not talking about occasional or one time or a temporary event based uh, project. The culture city initiative should be pursued uh, in our uh, everyday life. And last but not least, we also need to develop a citizenship to implement culture city initiative. The culture city has been promoted uh, starting from the statutory culture city based on the relevant legislation of Korea. And Culture city stands for a social organism that organically evolves based on the values and the potentials of its culture. And culture city should be promoted based on cultural democracy, uh, which will ensure uh, the active civic participation. And the second principle of uh, the culture city project is a decentralization of the local culture. Uh, Last but uh, not least, uh, the final principle is the diversity of the local culture. And such diversity should be reflected on the culture city project. Now, let me point out the difference between the culture city of East Asia and, and the culture city in Europe. So in the European cultural cities, the cultural regeneration is the main focus, uh, main focus. But here in Korea, actually culture city project uh, promote not only the cultural regeneration, but also the regeneration of the entire city. And when we talk about culture city initiative, we also need to uh, uh, point out that the right definition of regionalism. We need to consider both localism and the regionalism in order to come up with uh, the, the right implementation of culture city initiative. And also we need to pursue culture city concept based on critical regionalism. The culture of city starts with a reflection of the cultural characteristics, environment, and cultural diversity of each city. And the reason-based culture city should not be confined to the reason itself, but should be integrated with the global perspective by connecting and the universal values of mankind. We talk about uh, various aspects of a culture a city. And the Culture City Initiative can be promoted uh, through the medium of international exchange or cultural exchange. Uh. Due to time constraint, I would like to skip a few slides and I'd like to put uh, my presentation focus on the international uh, exchange among the culture cities of um, East Asia. So up until now, uh, the culture a city exchange have been made uh, based on um, the initiative of the central government, uh, starting from the designation of culture city by each government. However, I believe uh, that uh, the culture uh, city initiative uh, should be uh, promoted at the local government level at first. And this kind of uh, change of uh, process, uh, the culture city exchange it will tap in and uh, indefinite uh, potential of a culture city initiative. And also, the another important uh, 
the medium that we can utilize is a, 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 the creation of partnership among uh, the uh, three cities of uh, the countries which share some common concerns. As I mentioned before, cultural exchange is very important for the implementation of culture city initiative. And up until now, uh, the cultural exchange uh, has been made uh, on an occasional basis as a one-time event. But uh, we need to open the way for global exchange that can become dimensional and routine rather than pursuing dotted or the linear exchanges. Because the dotted or linear exchanges uh, led by local, uh, led by central government, um, have their uh, limitations. So, as I mentioned before, uh, the cultural exchange should be promoted and pursued, centering around the civil participation. We have already entered into the information society where the national borders uh, mean little. So who knows, wouldn't it be possible for a new civilization to be formed among the culture cities of East Asia? Uh, through the routinization of global exchanges among uh, the culture cities. In human history, it is not capital or power or destruction-based development that have sustained mankind. It is civilization technology and people that have continuously innovated and evolved the human history. The value of the culture created civilization and it became in the culture heritage of humanity. And culture heritage is regarded as capitalist with the highest economic value added and it has enduring scarcity value. So with this in our mind, we need to promote the routinization of the international exchanges. And a good case in point is uh, the exchange between uh, the Fukuoka city of Japan and the Pohang city of Korea. And the partnership uh, between the disaster vulnerable uh, cities of the three countries, uh, including Suchan province, Pohang city, and Fukuoka uh, city. So such kind of international exchange should be made on a continuous basis. And also uh, the exchange among different cities uh, of the three countries should be led by the civilians, not by the central government or the local government. Rather, uh, the local governments and central governments can provide the financial uh, support to further promote such international exchanges among different cities. Uh, thank you very much. This concludes my presentation. Thank you, uh, Mr. Uh, Cha Jae-gun. Uh, you just mentioned that uh, the CJK uh, shared the same destiny uh, as a neighboring countries and also uh, the geographical proximity requires uh, the civilians of the three countries to get closer uh, through active uh, exchanges. And I cannot agree more to the point made by uh, Mr. Cha. I believe that uh, the Jeju's uh, special governing province uh, uh, is at a prominent location because it is the closest with the CJK countries. So as a bridge that connects CJK, I think that Jeju has a very important role to play. And uh, Jeju City uh, was also selected as the cultural city of East Asia. And we will have Director Kim Mi Young from the Cultural Policy Division of the province to give us a presentation on some of the collaboration work that was done. Uh, very nice to meet you all. I am Kim Mi Young, Director of Cultural Policy Division of Jeju Special Self Governing Province of the Republic of Korea. And it's a great pleasure to share the case of Jeju at the symposium commemorating the 10th anniversary of TCS. Jeju Province was selected along with Ningbo City of China and Nara City in Japan in 2016 as a culture city of East Asia representing Korea, China, and Japan. 
Uh, and at the fourth Korea China Japan Cultural Ministers meeting held in 2012, the Culture City of East Asia program, under the principle of mutual respect for cultural diversity, was proposed as a meaningful process, project uh, to portray the spirit of East Asian consciousness, cultural exchange and fusion, and understanding other cultures. And I know that Yangzhou City and Kitakyu City, that just gave us a presentation earlier on, uh, are also designated cities of e uh, culture city of East Asia in 2020. Since uh, Jeju, ever since its designation uh, as a culture city, has been actively engaging in collaboration with the culture city of East Asia of China and Japan, and it's one of the most active cities engaging in international collaboration. Uh, in 2016, the three cities of Jeju, Ningbo, and Nara, which are culture cities representing the three countries, promoted 39 cultural exchange projects. And it is not easy to promote 39 exchange projects in one year. And this was possible because the three cities of, uh, of CJK closely communicated and actively cooperated with one another. In particular, in 2016, when the thought issue arose, tensions between Korea and China were rising, but there and there were difficulties. But the cultural exchange project between Jeju province and Ningbo city in China was steadfastly carried out as planned. And the Culture City of East Asia project will serve as a link of uninterrupted exchange until the very end, whenever destabilizing factors between countries arise, and is it assessed to play the role of an effective buffer. Exchanges centered on local cities become more active. Mutual trust and trust among citizens will be strengthened, and conflicts between countries will be able to be controlled to a minimum. And this is also an important role of the Cultural City East Asia program of CJK. Uh, Jeju, uh, based on the network established in 2016, have been engaging in follow-up projects ever since. Among them, we have the Korea-China-Japan Youth Cultural Camp, Tamna Cultural Festival Interna uh, International Cust Cust Festival, and Korea-China-Chinese and Japanese uh, Youth Cultural Classes for Children. These are held every year amongst the youth in Jeju, Ningbo, and Nara through cultural and artistic activities. And this is an important program of the youth of the three cities. And this year, uh, there were a total of six uh, online exchanges focusing on music and calligraphy activities. Tamna Cultural Festival is the largest folk uh, culture festival representing Jeju, uh, and traditional and folk performance teams from China and Japan are invited to participate every year. Uh, the art companies and groups who come for the Tamna Cultural Festival to Jeju visit elementary schools in Jeju Island and conduct traveling Korea, China, and Japan cultural classes. Overseas art groups directly teach children of the country uh, of their traditional dance and conduct classes together, such as letting them experience musical experiments. And it is a program that the art groups enjoy and the students love very much. Uh, looking back on the achievements of promoting the Culture City of East Asia Exchange pro Project in Jeju, first I would like to mention that the scope of exchange have been expanded from Nimbu City in 2016 and Nara City of Japan to successive other culture cities of East Asia. Jeju Island has a separate dedicated personnel in charge of exchanges with Culture City of East Asia, and that is why it was possible for us to run and establish a network of uh, Culture City of East Asia, and I look forward to active exchanges with Yangzhou City and Kitakyushu City in the future. Another achievement was that uh, the International Cultural Exchange Project was expanded to uh, other projects of cooperation with other various international councils uh, with the Culture City of East Asia project at the center, not only sister cities, but also with domestic and foreign missions and uh, UCLG and NEAR. I can see uh, that culture and art of Jeju is being introduced and is reaching more countries and various cultures of other cities are being introduced to Jeju. 39 projects were promoted in 2016, and it was since its designation as a culture city, and from 2017 to 2020, a total of 75 projects have been conducted. Uh, the pandemic era uh, of COVID-19 has affected the direction of cultural exchange. We have switched from face-to-face -face exchanges to online exchanges and art exchanges. Overseas, we have operated uh, the Jeju Island Day program and exchanges between cities and film festivals were also conducted. Uh, in Jeju, youth exchanges were converted to online exchanges and a number of international photo exhibitions were held. Uh, next is on the uh, uh, projects implemented in the first half of 2021. Let me just go on to uh, to explain just the key details. Uh, 
And、uh, based on the five years' work of collaboration between Jeju and Ningbo,、uh, there were business agreements forged between Ningbo and Jeju. And based on the achievements, uh, uh, and based on these business agreements, two in total, I believe that it will serve as an opportunity to promote further cultural exchange projects more stably in the future. In April, on in Ningbo City, there was a Jeju Island Day uh, program uh, that was conducted in April.、Uh, this Uh, program was to commemorate the fifth anniversary of exchange between the countries, or excuse me, the cities, and、uh, it involved picture books, photos, performance videos, and movie screenings on Jeju food experience, music performance, and exhibition of the Hanya culture. I believe that the international photo exhibition is a good way to engage in exchange, and、uh, contents、uh, can directly convey the situation of each place in this era of COVID. Jeju has been promoting this exhibition since 2020, ever since the spread of COVID was in full swing. And artists from 40 cities, including Japan, China, Russia, Brazil, Argentina, and Italy, participated. And most of the works were photos of major tourist spots and streets that were silenced, illuminating the heroes of the 2020、uh, COVID response. In June. An online real-time Korean lecture was held on the subject of Jeju's、uh, marine culture and myth,、uh, mythology culture. All the students were college students and high school students who were able to speak Chinese and Japanese、uh, in Korean, and it was conducted without an interpreter. And it was a novel program that enabled the younger generation to inform themselves of overseas Jeju culture through non-face-to-face exchanges. And also, the Jeju Forum、uh, it takes place、uh, every year on the theme of peace and prosperity. This year. We prepared a cultural session in which Korea, China, and Japanese literary figures、uh, participated, and the Korea China Japan Cooperation Secretary also runs a session at the Jeju Forum every year. Next is on the seven exchange projects、uh, of the second half of the year. Major exchange、uh, projects of the second half of 2021 involve、uh, Korea China Women of the Sea painting exchange exhibition.、Uh, this is a key、uh, program. Uh, of a woman of the sea, and I know that ama or the Japanese henya in Japan also exists, and I would like to suggest expanding these changes with the theme of women of the sea in Korea, China, and Japan. This project is an exchange project for disabled artists.、Uh, in this pandemic era, there are more ban- boundaries and barriers for those with disabilities, and through this project, we are preparing to eliminate these boundaries between artists with disabilities and to offer them to、uh, share their artwork with、uh, non-disabled. Artists、uh, and to have them participate in international exchanges. In fact, talented artists with disabilities are gradually being、uh, nurtured in the process, and I think this is、uh, one of the tasks that、uh, we should、uh, engage in to create a balanced international stage for artists with disabilities. The younger generation of Jeju and Okinawa have.、Uh, Who have a key identities have been engaging in meaningful projects to promote the traditional culture of one's hometown and、uh, one's own style. So this was the Jeju Okinawa Traditional Dance Youth、uh, Exchange. And、uh, not only that,、uh, we've been seeing the Jeju,、uh, the Korea, China, Japan Youth Cover Dance Project. Jeju,、uh, Cheongju, and Nikata of Japan,、uh, the youth of these、uh, regions have been coming together to engage、uh, and to produce and promote K-pop and J-pop cover dance videos with the local natural heritage as a background. And likewise, this is a meaningful project for the younger generation to promote the local、uh, natural heritage、uh, in their own cultural style of K-pop and J-pop. Uh, and uh, not only that, I would like to mention that、uh, there are many difficulties.、Uh But we've been having the three countries to also engage in art festivals. There are many difficulties due to COVID nineteen, but we hope that uh, with uh, the sponsorship of the Ministry of Culture of the Republic of Korea will、uh, will bear fruit. I know that there are many difficulties right now. Uh, in exchange collaboration projects, and it's true that、uh, most of the culture city of East countries、uh, for just one year have been focusing their programs. And if there are about thirty exchange projects promoted for one year, the representatives of three cities will meet at least six times. And the strong friendship that the city representatives build through these exchanges over the course of a year is an asset, a very important asset of culture city of East Asia. And it is necessary to maintain and expand and engage in follow up projects. But it's There are many shortcomings because there is no body to play a central role. I believe that the most important agenda of today's symposium is discussing ways to promote、uh, local. 
uh, exchange um, among CJK. In order to promote exchanges among CJK, local cities must engage in further cultural exchange. And through this cultural exchange, I think that we can see more active exchange that would better the understanding of each other's cultures and values. Promos proposing a, a, a consultative body would also help in in-depth cultural exchanges. And with that, let me finish my presentation. Thank you. Yes, uh, Director Kim, thank you very much for the presentation. And uh, we were able to understand the active programs and projects in place at Jeju. And once again, my respect to you. And particularly, you talked about uh, the uh, programs uh, for artists with disabilities uh, and the Tokyo Olympics and the Paralympics are to be held soon enough. And in that aspect, I believe that persons with disabilities also need to take part and um, should be offered with the opportunities to engage in international exchange. Once again, thank you very much for the presentation. And uh, we don't have a lot of time, but I think we have to summarize. Uh, we would like to entertain a couple of questions before we wrap up today's uh, symposium. Um, we have received a lot of questions from both online and offline and um, the audience members, and those questions are pretty uh, insightful. And I'd like to extend my apologies for not being able to uh, entertain and answer all those questions. And please understand. Uh, that uh, we cannot entertain and all the questions uh, due to time constraint. We have Ms. Luo, Hu Jiang, uh, the Deputy D D Director of the General Office of uh, the CIFCA. And we have just heard that the TCS has provided a lot of uh, support for uh, the local exchanges. And what kind of expectations do you have on the role of the TCS? Could you please answer uh, that question for one minute? And also, I'd like to ask a question to uh, Mr. Manjur Doshihiro. Uh, so in the era of, of the online untacked uh, communication, what could be the measures we can take to further uh, strengthen and promote uh, the communications among uh, local uh, governments to further I extend the local exchanges. Ms. Luo, could you please answer the question? Thank you very much. I would like to answer the question uh, asked by uh, the moderator. And before I uh, answer uh, the question, I'd like to extend my appreciation to the organizer for inviting me. and. It's quite meaningful uh, that uh, we've gathered through uh, the medium of a webinar and, and the pandemic situation where the offline or face-to-face -face exchange is uh, difficult. And also uh, this kind of online events are being held in uh, and the various uh, occasions uh, to tackle uh, the pandemic situation. So the question is about uh, the, the development of new models uh, for communication and exchanges in, in the pandemic era. I believe that the webinar-based exchanges can be made and also the achievements in terms of COVID-19 pandemic uh, countermeasures can be shared through those webinar events. And another point that I want to make uh, here is that actually we can engage ourselves in online congratulatory events to further strengthen the communication in the pandemic era. For example, uh, actually, my organization um, has held an online uh, event to congratulate the fifth uh, anniversary of uh, my organization's uh, exchanges with a Japanese organization. And I believe that there are various areas that we can utilize online event to further promote communication and exchanges, calligraphy exhibitions, and the youth calligraphy exchange or uh, the the event to congratulate the 30th anniversary of the diplomatic ties between Korea and China uh, can be held 
uh, in the form of online event and uh, my organization and the city also actively involves uh, in the online events. So the CIF, uh, CIFCA and the Sandung City government also uh, held a big uh, the online event participated by a, a great number of uh, the Chinese companies and the Korean and Japanese companies. Around 200 enterprise representatives participated in uh, the event and also uh, around the 20 billion um, the Vian uh, worth of investment talks were made during in the online event. And at the working uh, level uh, exchange, is a part of the working level exchange, the online and the uh, meetings uh, or the events were also actively utilized. So in this pandemic era, we need to further um, utilize uh, the online events and online meetings more actively. In the midst of COVID-19 pandemic, uh, we've uh, faced with a lot of difficulties. However, the current pandemic situation, uh, the failure to deal a negative impact on the online exchange uh, between and the three countries and the uh, working level people explore a new medium and the new breakthrough ways or the models to further promote the exchanges among uh, the three countries. And also I'd like to take this opportunity to extend my gratitude to the TCS uh, for playing a bridging role uh, between uh, the different sectors and, and the people of different countries. And also I'd like to uh, take this opportunity to uh, encourage the TCS to uh, further strengthen its role uh, as a bridge among uh, the people of the three different countries. Thank you very much. Yes, thank you very much uh, for your comments. And I was able to once again understand the efforts of CIFCM. My uh, gratitude goes to all of your efforts. And I know that uh, TCS uh, will probably have an even higher expectation for CIFCA. Thank you very much for your kind words. And uh, now I would like to ask uh, Managing Director Menchu Toshihiro. So as you know, it's very difficult to engage in uh, exchange in such a situation. But within three minutes, could you uh, maybe share with us how we can expand on the collaboration even on this uh, online platform, please? So we are talking about the online exchange and there are uh, upsides of this online exchange. So we know that there are only a limited number of people who can physically pay a visit to sister cities. So in the past, there are only a few selected students who were able to visit sister cities based on this youth exchange programs. However, with the introduction of online program, uh, Larger number of uh, people or the participants uh, can enjoy uh, the, the local exchanges uh, through the sister city relations. And we need to actually further explore uh, the potentials of uh, the online exchanges, particularly in the area of youth exchanges. We can choose or select a one specific topic to discuss what kind of detail the efforts are made in each country to further promote the specific uh, uh, cultural topic. So let me take a detailed example. A high school students actually selected a one specific topic. They made an online presentation and they shared their presentations uh, th through YouTube uh, and online and medium. So this is actual case uh, being uh, engaged uh, by the youth, uh, the participants of the sister, uh, the um, city exchange program. So we all know that uh, the new generation actually use a new medium and the new methods for uh, the exchanges, uh, uh, like creating the video clips or YouTube contents to share uh, together. And what was surprising to me was that uh, the introduction of the YouTube-based exchange between uh, Korea and the U.S. We all know that uh, the face-to-face -face exchanges have become difficult uh, in the midst of pandemic. So 
The people of the sister uh, cities actually engage themselves in this specific activity of creating a YouTube contents. So, for example, uh, the sister city residents uh, uh, of, of the U.S. Uh, created a Japanese song uh, to encourage uh, the Japanese uh, sister city residents uh, who suffered from the pandemic. So this is a one case uh, uh, in point, uh, and I want to emphasize uh, that if we succeed in uh, engaging ourselves in uh, this kind of online exchanges on a continuous basis. And when the pandemic situation gets resolved, the uh, local exchanges can further uh, uh, increase. Yes, thank you very much, uh, Managing Director Menju. I can see that uh, there can be more formats that will be opening up uh, in this online world, and I hope that we can take full advantage of all of these for us. But I believe not only in local, uh, not only the local governments, but also maybe TCS uh, can play a role to provide a public platform and provide more access to these platforms. And I think that this will help us inspire further exchange and collaboration and also better the situation. Once again, thank you very much for that uh, insightful idea and suggestion. And uh, I also have a question for uh, CEO Cha jae -gun. Uh, we talked about uh, the exchange of the culture city of East Asia, and it was uh, quite interesting. So maybe can you share with us a case? I know that there were a lot of achievements made already, but especially in this online and non-face-to-face -face situation, is uh, will there be uh, a method that you would like to share with us that CJK can utilize in this uh, era of COVID? Please, Mr. Cha. Um, I've skipped a few slides on my presentation due to a time constraint, so I think this is a chance for me to go through the detailed examples of uh, the local exchanges based on the uh, Culture City Initiative. I believe uh, that the Culture City Initiative should promote it in a way to go beyond uh, statism or the nationalism. So we need to have a universal goals uh, when we implement a Culture City Initiative, and by doing so, uh, we can overcome the geographical limitations of a culture city of East Asia uh, initiative. As it was uh, mentioned in my presentation, uh, there was a very exemplary case of uh, the solidarity and partnership among um, the uh, cities in three countries uh, that uh, suffered from the damages of natural disasters. We all know that uh, those cities have a lot in common in in terms of the uh, city structure and also we've just found and uh, that uh, the way that the 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 local cities overcome and those disaster damages was a culture-based, uh, very uh, enjoyable uh, uh, methodology. So I believe that such kind of solidarity for overcoming natural disasters among the three countries can be a good uh, the model which needs to be promoted and pursued further in the future. And such kind of initiative or the exchange should be designated as a strategic uh, the exchange uh, to be promoted further by the local government and the central government. And also, the, another case in point is the solidarity and the alliance among the different the art uh, district or the art uh, festival hosting and the cities. Uh, we've talked a lot about the online um, platform and the metaverse is a a, a quite popular uh, new medium here in Korea. So I believe that we need to establish a new uh, IT platform such as Metaverse to further uh, boost uh, local exchanges. But such kind of uh, IT or technologies related, uh, the platform establishment project cannot be pursued by the civilians. Uh, rather, such kind of platform should be established by the local government or the central government to enable uh, the active participation of the people. So the relevant financial support should be provided and also uh, the other services or support such as simultaneous interpretation service should be provided uh, along with uh, the establishment of such platform. And if uh, such kind of services are available, then and the culture city based exchange can be further uh, increased.
Don. CEO Cha, thank you very much. I know that there were more questions, but uh, in lieu of time, I'm afraid we cannot uh, answer um, each and every question. I ask for your understanding. My next question goes to Chief Hibino. You talked about uh, the achievements of the Museum Exchange Program, but in the process, were there any difficulties or challenges? And how were you able come? How were you able to overcome the uh, the challenges? Yeah. Can you share with us in a minute or two on how you did that, please? Yes, with regard to the challenges and difficulties of the program is that because this is not a bilateral program, but rather a trilateral program or a program amongst three cities, you can see that uh, when we do have the museum professionals or museum personnel come and visit us from the both countries, because we have a different culture, sometimes it's very difficult to offer a warm welcome. Uh, but then again, for more than a decade, the three cities have been engaging in a lot of exchange and we've been sharing uh, many things together and the process we learn a lot. And I want to say that uh, it's uh, we. It's important for the museums to play the role of a window of international exchange, and it was great to have that first-hand opportunity on how that can be done. And not only that, building trust amongst curators was also a key component to this program. So rather than a challenge, I think I can say that it was a uh, a program uh, that was quite rewarding. And uh, it's very different from the central level program. You can see that uh, these are museums uh, of cities of historic background, and that's why we can assimilate more with the cities. And there's also a history that we share. So in the process, it was great to engage in exchange. And academically speaking, as I've already mentioned, in Thailand and in the Lushan Museum, uh, we have found the old photos of South Manchuria Railway Company. Uh, this was a great discovery for Japan. So it's a window and gateway for international collaboration. And with decades of accumulated trust, I think that this was a major achievement of the program. Thank you. Yes, so thank you very much, uh, Chief Hibino, for your answer. It was a very interesting response, and thank you very much for that. Uh, unfortunately, because uh, time's almost up, we will have to wrap up. Once again, I uh, would like uh, to mention that uh, we've been in this session for more than 450 minutes. And I know that uh, there are many that support this program and session. And in Korea, they say that uh, it's about go alone if you want to go quickly, and if you want to go afar, go together. There, This is a word of wisdom that's quite popular in Korea. And I want to mention that uh, see the TCS uh, of decades of work, and we also have uh, heard... Uh, the local government's efforts for decades, for more than 20, 30 years. Uh, and I believe that all of this have been the foundation of CJK uh, and the relationship of CJK. There may be difficulties and challenges, and there were challenges, but the reason why we were able to overcome all of these challenges was uh, because uh, all of you have been engaging in collaboration at the local level and also have been engaging in people-to-people -people exchange. You all knew that you were the bridge to the relationship and I think that that enabled us to for all of us to uh, come to this point so once again if we want to go afar we should go together and I want to emphasize this was with word of wisdom once again and we have a Lucian uh, and I would like to mention a verse in one of his um, well-known novels I thought that hope sometimes we do have or maybe we do not. It's as if uh, it's a path on the road, on the ground. On the ground, there was no road or path. And we have more that take that road, then it becomes a path. So Lucian has mentioned this very important uh, wisdom in one of his novels. And I, the reason why I mentioned this is uh, because this is what I've learned from Secretary General of uh, Michi Igami, and I think that this is more than appropriate uh, right now to mention. So Secretary General Michi Igami and Deputy Secretary General uh, Chao Jing and Kang Dong-ho, thank you very much for uh, providing us with this opportunity. And also, I 
would like to extend my gratitude to all of our local government officials of CJK for your efforts in this very difficult time of COVID. Thank you very much for all of your efforts. And with that, let me close as the moderator. Thank you very much for your participation. Thank you, Professor Young and distinguished guests for the great presentations and the great discussion. The presentations and the discussion that followed shed light on how local governments have contributed to exchange between the three countries. And it gave us quite a lot of food for thought as we think about reinvigorating exchange in the months and years ahead. This is a continuing conversation, and we hope that this symposium further inspires discussions about invigorating local government exchanges. In closing, I would like to invite TCS Deputy Secretary General Tao Jing to deliver closing remarks. Distinguished guests, ladies and gentlemen, I am Zhao Jing, the Deputy Secretary General of the TCS. Thanks to your support, we were able to successfully complete today's symposium on the theme of promoting trilateral cooperation at the local level organized by the TCS. Experts and scholars from the three countries kindly shared detailed the status of the exchange between local governments and cases of friendly cooperation with the focus on the topics of cooperation between Korea, China, and Japan. It also was mentioned that we need to expand exchanges with a Friendship City Plus and that a new way of thinking is needed to solve common issues such as aging population. We also have had helpful suggestions on how the TCS could do more. Among the series of events commemorating the 10th anniversary of the establishment of a TCS, today's symposium shed light on the humanistic touch and the role of local governments and provided the participants with a chance to gain a new understanding of trilateral cooperation among local governments. I believe the symposium served as an opportunity to add a new impetus to trilateral local cooperation by enhancing understanding and trust between the peoples of the three countries and local governments and to lay a healthy and friendly social foundation for CJK cooperation. On behalf of the organizer, I would like to thank all the partners for their active support, the presenters for their wonderful presentations, and the online audience for the enthusiastic participation. Local exchanges are a very important part of CJK cooperation. The expansion of trilateral cooperation will open up more possibilities for uh, regional exchanges. In the past two years, daily people-to-people -people exchanges and local exchanges have been limited in the midst of COVID-19. However, the current difficulties are only temporary, and our wishes for cooperation and the big framework of mutually benefiting cooperation will not change. I have no doubt that trilateral cooperation will be upgraded to a higher level and become more active after the pandemic. TCS aims to strengthen and communication and support regional cooperation uh, between Korea, China, and Japan through coordination and cooperation and serve as a bridge of friendly trilateral relations linking people's hearts and minds. In three days, the Tokyo Olympic Games will close. I hope that the players from Korea, China, and Japan will do their best to the end and achieve excellent results. It will be the glory of East Asia and, and the glory of the world. Thank you once again for your support and participation. Thank you, Deputy Secretary General Tao. Before, you, before we conclude today, on behalf of the TCS, I'd like to apologize for us ruining over time from our planned time. Uh, I believe that it is only because we have had such great discussion and meaningful uh, questions. I would like to kindly ask all our listeners to answer our survey and let us know what you thought about today's event. You can access the survey 
either by scanning the QR code on the screen right now or using the URL we will send you to after the event. This concludes today's symposium. Thank you once again to all who joined us today. We look forward to welcoming you soon. Mm -hmm.